hopefully didn't get cancelled yet this week, so just wanted to announce that I will be streaming over at Kick, kick.com slash or link in the description. My first stream will be January 6th in the afternoon, baby. Be there or be square. Let's burn this to the ground. Next on the agenda, there has been... Vivzy pop drama and as you know a lamau does a good job covering it and i have a lot of opinions regarding it because i think Vivzy pop and i are relatively in a similar spot obviously i think she's a lot more famous than i am therefore she's a bigger target than i am however we are in a very very similar spot in the sense that i think we both get over hated for things that aren't really bad more as they are just kind of cringe now the big difference between me and Vivzy pop is i think i handle my drama relatively well and i think Vivzy pop handles her drama relatively poorly she always ends up responding to stuff someone will call her out and she'll respond with like some sort of snarky response that more people will cause her to do it <sighs> but anyway there has been a lot of vivzy pop hate uh, especially because has been hotels getting a series on prime next month so a lot of people hate that she's getting popular through that and you'd notice a lot of vivzy pop drama stems from some sort of jealousy of success and that's crazy. I do think a lot of uh, a lot of influencer drama stems purely from uh, jealousy. Realistically, I made my incredibly dumb and stupid video about uh, Twitch is hentai, which ended up actually being true and right and based years down the line. I'm just saying, I'm a prophet, uh, and I still get hate to this day for that video. If you've been around the Hell of a Boss or Hell's Been Hotel community, you've likely heard of one of Vivzy Pop's many dramas. As far back as I can remember, these situations have been intrinsically attached to her brand, and in recent weeks, things have spiraled a little it's well i mean i think anyone that um makes videos for a niche is gonna get hate once the videos hits the outside part like it's it's joe cat all over again joe cat did her his um his i like girls video which was just a totally fine nothing burger of a video and he gets so much hate for it just because it grew out of his niche to the point that he, he wants to quit content creation literally because of that amount of hates Hate, hate he got so hell of a boss which ultimately is a niche video right it is a series for a niche it's a cartoon obviously that's going to grow out into the greater twitter sphere and people are going to want to annihilate her for it and it's so sad it's at the point where although there are definitely are valid things to criticize vivzy for the level of hatred and bandwagoning has started to get out of hand in this video i'm going to split it up into three sections first i'll talk about the recent dramas that have occurred in the past month or so and some of the issues with them after i'll talk about my thoughts along with a genuine criticisms that you can level against Vivzy. Okay. And then finally, I'll provide some- I don't think I've ever heard A. Lamau criticize Vivzy in uh, in one of his videos, but I am here for it. I am interested. Concluding thoughts. A couple of weeks ago, Twitter user Mega- Oh! I saw this. If the Amazing Digital Circus was written by the writers of Hell of a Boss. Well, I don't know if I saw this one specifically, but I did see this trend where people were making, if this was Hell of a Boss, and it was just like a character from something just saying the fuck word a lot. Chan posted a meme video with the caption, the Amazing Digital Circus if it was written by the people who made Hell of a Boss. The video was a fun gag to poke fun at the amount of swearing in Hell of a Boss, which has been a contentious point since the show first aired its pilot. Me and a couple friends saw it shortly after it was posted and found it pretty funny because it was just a lighthearted meme poking fun. Some Twitter users, especially fans of the show, thought it was offensive because of the caption. Many also pointed out that several of the crew members that worked on the Digital Circus were friends with Viv or worked on Has Been in Hell of a. It's such a dumb thing. Like, I think that it's a, it's a fully relative concept if you i am very much of the belief that no one is entitled to anything that comes their way aside from like basic human rights <laughs> aside from basic human rights no one's entitled to shit okay so if you don't like hell of a boss don't watch hell of a boss if you don't like me don't watch me uh and uh, i am very much into that whole concept now a lot of people on twitter don't think that's fair or valid and they feel like they absolutely they have to hate on things that they fit that, that they don't like or that they think is cringe with the caveat that they have to be successful and it's uh, it's interesting it's like someone becomes successful doing something that you don't respect and suddenly you have to go completely crazy and i don't even know if you don't respect it as a result twitter is like a pure hate bro i had to delete the video i had no intention of hurting anyone it's just a funny meme see when i saw something like that amazing digital circus it was made of hell of a bus and then they show kane from the major digital circus just saying what the fuck fuckery is fucking going on right now you 
dick fucks, right? When I when I, I saw something like that, and the and that's cute, that's funny, because there's a lot of cursing in Hell of a Boss. And if you don't like that, don't watch it. So Mega Chan took down the video, saying, "I had to delete the video. I had no intention of hurting anyone." They also stated that they were blocked by Vivzy over the incident. Oh man, that's so sad. Because he meant it light as a lighthearted thing, but and, and see, this is why Vivzy literally digs her own grave. This is why Vivzy is digging her own grave. Bro, do you have any idea how many Nux hate accounts there are? There is an entire Nux hate community on Twitter right now. There is literally an entire Nux hate community on Twitter. A hate-dom, if you will. Someone made a video talking about the hate-dom of Nux Taku. Okay? Uh, bro, <laughs> it's insane. And you just ignore it and you live life like everything else. If you just touch grass every once in a while and let them cry, then, then whatever, they'll cry into their void. With the caption, fine, I'll repost it back by popular demand. With the post blowing up again like in the original post. A few hours after the repost, Vivzy made a post talking about the whole ordeal, saying, People be making the same, lol, hell of a boss, just swearing, sex, laugh, jokes over and over. But like, I've been influenced by Seth Rogen comedies on South Park, so Yes, that shit makes me chuckle. I weep for you if you don't think a well-delivered fuck word is funny. Bro, I've seen people give Nux death threats on Twitter. True, and you know what I do when that happens? I ignore it. But this tweet, this tweet is so cringe. You do not have to justify the sense of humor in your content to any of these people because these people just feel satisfied that you are being annoyed by it. Vivzy pop for the love of fucking God. You're digging your own grave here, lady. You make good stuff, and not everyone will like it, and humor is subjective, and you don't need to explain why you think it's okay. She made a few other comments and replied to a user who said, To be fair, you kinda overdo it. Like, it should be led up to you organically. And that is a completely subjective take that Vivzy Pop should just ignore. In response, Viv said, That's full on subjective. I feel the swearing is organic. A lot of the swearing in the show isn't meant for comedy. It's just how the characters talk. It's how I talk, and how most of the things I grew up with had characters talk. If you don't like it, cool, it's not my problem. This post was not taken well, and it got over 4 million views. Obviously it wasn't taken well. Views because of the quote retweets. There was I find it so funny that this is the video that inspired Vivzy Pop to tweet this. The fact that she can't take a joke while being inspired by Seth Rogen and South Park of all things is actually hilarious. I hate to say this. I hate it, because Vivzy Pop gets way too much hate. This guy's right. Now, if she, even if it bothered her but she didn't reply, people would at least think she got, she took the joke. But she could not take this joke publicly they saw her downfall in real time so of course they, they ratioed her with the uh, with the same freaking video again and obviously now that you see that she is actually big baby rage mad over all of this everyone is jumping on it uh, this if it was made by hell of a boss and it was just random characters swearing this if it was made by hell of a boss and then just people's were several quote retweets with tens of thousands of likes ranging from saying vivzy can't take criticism to making fun of the amount of profanity and sex jokes in viv shows as for my thoughts on the situation, I think it's a bit tricky. I personally- It's so not tricky. Vivzy Pop could do the, whatever the hell she wants with her content because it's her content. The end, period. People are going to hate because people are going to hate anyway because they are jealous and because it is niche and because they find it cringe and because they know they'll get likes if they hate because there's an entire freaking subculture of haters on Twitter. So it is such a not complicated decision in my, in my humble opinion. From her perspective, do whatever the fuck you want. From their perspective, haters gonna hate. You just gotta ignore that, brother. I found the video funny. However, there were some people who were upset, which is valid. Some people aren't aware, but the Hell of a Boss humor joke has been a long-running gag against the shows or Vivzy for a while. I've covered it in my video on the hate dumb, but anytime a new episode comes out, people repeat the same sort of talking points about how the show's humor sucks or how Vivzy can't write. What happened is Vivzy has seen this sort of argument countless times. So, when she saw that Kane video, she blocked the user and did her subtweet. It wasn't solely because of the video, but probably a combination of things. That was the straw that broke the camel's back, I guess. Dog. And I'll be honest, even me, so every once in a while, I, and I, I've trained myself, I am prime, okay? And I'll see tweets every once in a while, and I just, oh, I want to respond. There was one tweet. There's a screenshot of my uh, Scott Pilgrim video uh, on Twitter. Um, just just the video itself, the thumbnail and the title, saying, Betty says the... <laughs> Betty says uh, he, he mentions porn in the first 10 minutes of his video and that tweet got 70,000 likes which I mean okay whatever but the funny thing was like <laughs> I didn't mention porn in the first 10 minutes of that video <laughs> so I really wanted to just respond saying oh, but, but I um, um, but I didn't but obviously I didn't do that because what the hell's the point <laughs> I'm just mentioning this like as an example 
of what not to do and what to do. Realistically, it didn't really bother me that much. It was just like an erm actually that I wanted to respond with, but then I felt like, why give them the satisfaction of replying? But anyway, it's just, it's so sad. One hand, I can understand why she blocked the user. Seeing this sort of rhetoric on your feed constantly- WRONG! You never block! I'm sorry, A. Lamau. I don't mean to do this, bro. I like you, A. Lamau. You never block! You always mute. Blocking is engagement. It is showing them that they won. It is showing them that, that you are insecure about them. You mute. They don't know that you mute. You don't see them. Win. Win. The end. I never mute people either just because I like seeing the hate tweets of me because kind of... <laughs> It makes me chuckle every once in a while, so I don't actually... <laughs> I don't mute. Seeing this sort of rhetoric on your feed constantly for long periods of time can be draining. On the other hand, blocking and then subtweeting isn't the right way to handle things. I'll discuss this point in detail when I get into the proper criticisms against Vivzi later, but it's not that Vivzi is unable to take criticism on board. It's just that the way she responds can be a bit inflammatory, which ends up making the situations worse. Overall, I think neither party is in the wrong. The original video's caption probably could have been better. The wrong is the masses of Twitter trolls, like the people that are just, um, hating for no reason. At putting hate into the world for no reason. But again, the person that made the tweet, I don't think they did wrong. Vivzi Pop, I think she, her response was cringe and, um... Definitely not the right play, even though it's not wrong per se. Better, and it was good, it was reposted. Meanwhile, I think Vivzi shouldn't have tweeted at all. It just yeah. made the whole thing worse and led to her getting bashed for days on end. So following on from this situation, it caused the creation of a trend. Over on Know Your Meme, a page was created called If It Was Written Like Hell of a Boss. Dude, Know Your Meme just goes with every- Dude, you don't understand. Well, dog, that's not like such a big deal. Bro, you don't understand. Because people on Twitter freaking love me love me dude there's an entire know your meme page about me <laughs> being a gooner being a gooner because when i when i uh when i watched the amazing digital circus video i made a comment saying like oh there's gonna be a lot of rule 34 it is so bro dude this is now all of a sudden here even though i was totally right but like again know your meme is just that's everywhere. That's anything. Basically, people started to use that same meme template to poke fun at the show. I'll show a couple examples. Here's one called Genshin Impact if Vivzi Pop wrote it with 4,000 likes. Adventure Time if it was written by Vivzi Pop with 47,000 likes. God damn, that's crazy hatred. Because at this point, it's just it's just hate. Only guy if it was written by Vivzi Pop with 28k likes. And lastly, Chainsaw Man if it was written by. <laughs> you do that horror shit somewhere else. <laughs> That's hilarious, bro. That's funny. By Vivzi Pop with 31k likes. Personally, for me, sorry, I don't. Sorry, I know it was made from a place of hate, but come on, that's really funny. Really find these funny. The best way to explain it would be this meme from Diary of a Wimpy Kid. It was funny the first time with the Digital Circus video. However, since it got mainstream, the joke has been ran into the ground by people hopping yeah. on to farm Twitter likes. And to farm likes and hate. Like, honestly. It's wore out as welcome in my opinion, and I've seen a bunch of people say the same thing, so I reckon others are fed up with it as well. Vivzi Pop was trending on Twitter as a result of the memes. Around this time, the newest Hell of a Boss song called Just Look My Way released. In the description it says, Warning for, no swearing, gasp. I think the reference is firstly that this is one of the only Hell of a Boss songs to feature no swearing and also a reference to the recent controversy. Once Twitter saw this, they got upset, with one tweet saying, oh, she's losing it with 44,000 likes. I think ah, this was damn. just misinterpreted. There's no way to know if the description is a reference to the recent controversy, but if it is... I mean, it probably is, to be honest, but even if it is, that's like such a nothing burger for Twitter to just get upset about. Dude, if you're gonna hate on me for something that I don't think deserves the hate, Honestly, go for it. Hate on me for it. Please do. I thought it was funny. They're basically rolling with the punches and going along with the joke. You can disagree and say it's petty, which is completely valid, but I don't- I mean, it was petty, but it's also kind of funny, I guess. I sort of. I think Vivzi is necessarily- See, I think that's fine. That is like, whatever, totally fine. It's just the, the actual tweeting and engagement. It ...for including a joke in the description of the video. Moving into December 4th, the Vivzi Pop Patreon was in full blast. A thread was posted called, A thread of all the gross and dumb shit Vivzi Pop has sold on her Shark Robot page, on a scale from stupid to actually very gross. This thread is complete garbage and extremely petty, so I'll go through it tweet by tweet. So the God image damn. attached is Vivzi's Thirsty Boy mug. Which again, dude, you find worse mugs on eBay, okay? To hate on her for selling a mug like this is insane. Literally no idea how this is bad, it's just a mug. The first reply says, the ugly ass plushies that look like they're made out of tissue paper. You can say whatever you want about the plushies, the older ones definitely look cursed, but I don't see how this is a proper criticism. Yeah, like you no, it's not. You don't understand. You don't understand something about Twitter, something fundamental about Twitter. You don't need proper criticism. Again, you make fun of my 
Scott Pilgrim versus the world video for saying porn in the first 10 minutes. Even though I literally didn't say porn in the first 10 minutes, you'll still get 70,000 likes because they're just people that want to hate. It's not criticism. None of it's criticism. It's just hatred. Plushies, cool, congrats. The second reply says, sell merch of Moxie's dad who is portrayed as abusive and wrong in the show I think. He's a villain! My Hero Academia sells freaking merch for, for Shigaraki, okay? Think. This is just complete stupidity. They're basically saying you can't sell merch of evil characters. Yeah. This reply saying Twitter users when they walk into Walmart and see a Darth Vader action figure. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good tweet. Just perfectly reiterates how stupid the entire argument is. The next one says, Use her only lesbian couple twice an inherently sexual line of pins. Question. Bro, the entire show is like that. I don't know. <laughs> so this again just makes no sense the images aren't inherently sexual the first one is vaggy well this one this one's kind of sexual but I, again i don't even think that's a problem in charlie hugging while the second one is a reference to the lipstick meme the next tweet is showcasing some valentino merch this is the same as the crimson point they're basically saying you can't have merch of evil characters which is stupid so stupid bro so dumb T tell that to all the the six-year-olds playing with endeavor action figures from my hero academia the final two tweets discuss sally may one says and lastly she's made a ton of sexualized merch of her only trans character who has one line by the way that also over exposes her bulge constantly to a not normal degree so the first thing is that the first sentence is complete misinformation. Sally May isn't the only trans character in the show, there's several. Secondly, is that the voice actor of Morgana Ignis said that Sally May's merch is the way it is because it's to emphasize how she's a body positive trans character. I discussed this point way back in my video dedicated to the Sally May discourse and I have no idea why it's still being brought up. Hunter B, one of the Spindle Horse team- You don't know why it's brought up? It's brought up to get likes. The end. The quote retweets saying, when I made the Stella and Sally May pinup print, I worked very closely with Morgana, Sally May's actress. I wanted to get Sally Sally May completely right, and the bulge was requested. Trans characters do not owe you comfort. They have every right to feel sexy and express it. This just reiterates what I said. The merch was designed that way, and there's nothing wrong with it. A lot of people are saying the OP is transphobic because of these statements, so it looks like it backfired on them. This thread is a complete nothing burger, and it's clear it was created to jump on the current hate train against yeah, Biz on her shows. They wanted to go straight after Spindle Horse's pockets by bashing the merch and trying to see issues that aren't really there. Overall, just a mess of a thread, and another one added to the pile of nonsense. So with the recent stuff covered, it's time to move on. In the next section, I'll talk about how Vivzy handles criticism as a whole and why these responses can end up hurting. Her. Oh yeah, here here it comes. Here's the rough one. Her image. So within the past year or so, Vivzy Pop has gained the reputation of being unable to take criticism. In my past videos and comment sections, you can see how myself and most fans would disagree with this statement. Vivzy is always. I, I mean, I don't think she's unable to take criticism. I just think that she does a really bad job of responding to criticism or responding to hate in general. And an extraordinary amount of hate, so her responding was just a product of that. However, within the past couple of months, for me and many others, our opinion has changed on this. We still think overall Vivzy is a great person who makes great shows. However, she definitely has a hard time taking criticism on board and reacting appropriately. I'll explain why. On Vivzy's Twitter, she's mentioned criticism numerous times. In a thread posted back in June, she addresses this exact topic. I'll leave the thread on screen, so feel free to pause. She doesn't need to respond to any of this. Oh my god, bro. Pause on read in your own time. She says that she's had the... Viv People say it's unprofessional to acknowledge this kind of thing. No, it's dumb to acknowledge this kind of thing. I can't take criticism reputation for years because of the bad webcomics wiki, which is true. It was one of the first forums to extensively document and discuss her and her art. She talks about the difference between good faith and bad faith criticism and then finishes off by saying power to those who give good criticism so from viv's tweets she asserts that overall she's receptive to criticism and loves discussing it it's just the bad faith stuff that she dislikes which is completely fine honestly that is completely fine and that is a very valid stance and i i almost believe it i i, I do probably believe it i guess i'm 90 90 percent on board with that but responding to the hate that's the problem and also, I think she sometimes can't differentiate between criticism and hate, or she can't differentiate between, like, dumb meme just for the shits and giggles and hate. Like, um, the... The Amazing Digital Circus, if it was written by a hell of a boss and it just has a lot of swearing. Like, I don't think that's hate or criticism. I think that's just a meme. And the fact that she blocked it and talked about like it was criticism or hate is ridiculous. However, is it as time passes, you can't really use this excuse forever. Viv says she can respond well to criticism, but as I will discuss, there's numerous situations that raise a few eyebrows. Nine months ago, Vivzy subtweeted a video by a channel called Dire Gentleman, but they've since rebranded to We Are Not Alive. They made a video called Why Did Hell of a Boss Fall Off So Hard? I watched the video back when it came out, and although I don't agree with everything said in the video, it was overall pretty 
decent and did have some worthwhile opinions that I empathise with, especially relating to character beats, plot progression and tonal issues. Livesey okay. saw the video and didn't like it at all. She made a subtweet about it along with several replies. To some people this came ah, Bro, imagine making responses to criticism videos. Oh my god, bro. Either learn from it or disagree with it, but you're gonna make responses? For credit. First of all, I don't think this is true. He just, I didn't watch this video, so I could just be totally talking out of my ass. But why did Hell of a Boss so hard? It's uh, fall off so hard. It's still getting hella views. It didn't fall off. You might not like the quality anymore. You might not like how things have changed. I don't know. I don't think it fell off. So I disagree with the title, even though I didn't watch the video. So just fully saying this, I'm sure there is constructive criticism in this video. That said, to go on a whole rant talking about how that video is wrong is such a bad look. It is such a bad look. He's punching down or unreceptive to criticism. Personally, I think there was no need for the tweets to be made. If Vivzy wanted to discuss the issue, surely she could have reached out to the YouTuber in question and discussed it in private DMs with them. Engaging with others and sharing ideas is great, but doing hostile tweets doesn't really benefit anyone. Putting someone on blast for making a YouTube video wasn't a good look. One thing Viv nope. does a lot is respond to random accounts or obvious trolls. For example, someone will tweet out something inflammatory. Viv Did you really need to defend your series' honor to this guy who made humor penis joke? Will reply, and then it'll start a shitstorm. People will then use this example of Viv responding as ammunition against her in the future. It's a vicious cycle and it's been going on for nearly a decade now. Another example is the fanfiction thread she made. Viv he made a thread about some main criticisms, one being the fact that people call her plots fanfiction, basically saying they're bad or completely out of left field, akin to something a fan would write on a site like Wattpad. You won't be surprised to find out that the thread spiralled out of control and Viv replied over 20 times to random users and argued about the subject. One person brought up how Vivzy reacted negatively to criticism in the past, mentioning the Dire Gentleman video from earlier. Viv's response was to say she doesn't know what video they're referring to, but it wasn't good faith criticism regardless. By this point, people started to notice this pattern and were getting fed up. Over on the Hell of a Boss subreddit, the comments section featured comments with hundreds of upvotes saying the same sort of points I've mentioned so far. That Viv needs to stop responding to every single tweet that criticizes the show, and that giving them attention of any kind reinforces their behavior. I've What's ironic though is I anyone that's actual opinion of the Hell of a Boss show changes because of Vivzy Pop's habit of responding on Twitter, that's stupid too. Like dude, I could like Harry Potter and dislike JK Rowling, okay? It, just, as, just as a simple example. That's an extreme case per se. I don't dislike Vivzy Pop at all. I just think it's it's literally fueling the fire. You are fueling your haters. I've witnessed firsthand the tide shift and people start to get fed up. A couple of months ago, Twitter went up in smoke because of Elon Musk's purchase and Vivzy made a Blue Sky account. For fans, this was a step in the right direction because she would perhaps be able to escape the toxicity of Twitter and talk about more upbeat topics. Unfortunately, however, Vivzy went back to posting the same sort of content, the most recent being a post about how bad video essays are. Vivzy reposted a reply for the Spindlehorse team member that said that some criticisms go against the core foundation of the show, so it's likely that Viv's tweet was referring to video essays made about her shows in particular. With Blue Sky as a platform more or less dead in the water, Vivzy went back to Twitter and again went back into the Twitter cycle. And lastly, we have the digital circus situation I discussed at the start of the video. It again just follows the same sort of format as the previous Twitter situation. Viv does a subtweet or a response for no reason. A shitstorm starts, leading to Vivzy being viewed as the bad guy and getting heavy criticism. This situation is then piled in with the rest and further reinforced forces the stereotype that she can't handle criticism. As you can see from the video so far, it's Dude, it, when someone tells you you can't handle criticism, if you say it's not true, I can handle criticism, you have just proved that you can't handle criticism. I, I don't know what, I feel like this is the most obvious shit in the world and doesn't need to be says. If anyone tells you you can't handle criticism, you know what the response should be? Wow. Thank you. It's a bit of a complicated situation. A lot of the controversy revolving around Viv is complete nonsense and is fueled purely by spite. On the other hand, as I've showcased, Vivzy has a hard time ignoring these situations and responds, which unfortunately makes things worse. As time has went on, fans of her and the shows have started to become disenfranchised. People have noticed this pattern and started to get sick of the constant arguing, with some saying that Viv puts herself into these situations. People have been saying for over a year at this point that Viv should get off Twitter, stop responding so much, or- True, I'm pretty much off Twitter at this point. I am bare- I like- I have a Twitter. I actually deleted it from my phone. Like, I am barely, barely, barely on Twitter at this point. And it's it's healthy. I used to be on Twitter not to respond, just to read stuff. It took, it was like a time sponge, a negative time 
time sponge. Get a solution in the game manager. None of these things have been resolved, and it just feels like things get more hostile with every passing week. As for my thoughts, I'm sick and tired of it. Long-time viewers of my channel will know my takes on these situations and how I've said many times that she should just disengage from Twitter. It's especially troubling because Twitter is so essential to the advertisement of the shows. News, updates, and sneak peeks True. are revealed on Vivzy's account. This leads to a situation where you have to... That's why just use your account for news, sneak peeks, and shit. Don't actually do anything else. Follow her to keep up to date. However, if you do, you're bombarded by all of this drama and other nonsense. This was pretty bad in 2021, where Vivzy would regularly engage with politics. Getting political on- oh, I remember that. I remember that. Twitter is a recipe for disaster, and Vivzy felt this firsthand with the Scott Cawthon situation. That situation has been used against her ever since, and as a result, Vivzy hasn't really discussed politics much. I mean the only way this can be resolved is for Vivzy to just relax with the way she reacts to stuff on Twitter. One example I thought was pretty helpful was her thread on Millie a while back. Some people interpreted this as her shifting the goalposts, but I thought it was a unique insight into the character. Millie has been criticised for a while, so it was interesting to see Viv's take on the topic, along with providing hints for future episodes that will involve Millie. Her statement about Hasbin Hotel being female-led ruffled a few feathers, though. So, I reckon if Vivzy focused more on engaging like that, or just not responding to trolls or subtweeting, then things will quiet down a lot. The reputation about her not taking criticism will eventually fade, and people will move Well, on. it'll only fade if she leaves. So overall, I understand why Vivzy is labelled as unable to take criticism, but I don't think it's necessarily fair. I know Vivzy doesn't mean any harm, but it's just sad to see this sort of stuff happen time and time again. I haven't lost hope though and I'm excited for the future. When Haspin releases, it's likely to have a bunch of garbage discourse like when the pilot first came out. We've already seen some oh, nonsense yeah. opinion. Dude, it's gonna start on, on Prime and Twitter's gonna get absolutely riled up by how many times they say the word fuck uh, and they're gonna get really, really mad. And I just hope Vivzy Pop could just walk away with the cash that she is paid by Prime and not need to actually get involved in the discussions. Ian's on Twitter so far. So hopefully by that point, Viv has reformed her tweeting and taken a step back. I tried to make this video as balanced as possible, a bit like my video on Vivzy's art style. It had a wonderful reception and I had a lot of comments thanking me for identifying the issues with her art, why people think this way, and then providing some ways to remedy the criticisms. Hopefully this video will be perceived the same way, or I'll just get eaten alive by a mob on Twitter. That could also happen. If you agree with my takes or have any of your own, I'd love for you to leave them in the comments section down below. Thanks for joining this uh, toxic gossip train. Uh, I, need, I need the freaking Colleen Ballinger ukulele video as an outro for these videos. But uh, thank you so much for being here. This is my um, my incredibly based take. My incredibly based take. Just fucking stop acknowledging the, the people. Vivzy Pop, for the love of God. I know it's annoying, but like, please, please. God damn. It's like most issues could literally be solved that way. Anyway, that's it. See ya.